Our first session of the day is Awareness of the Gut Microbiome is Shaping Perceptions Towards Digestive Health and Immunity, presented by Will Cowling, Marketing Manager at FMCG Gurus, a world-leading company in market research helping companies in areas such as consumer research, product development, and idea generation. Without further ado, Will, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you very much. Nice to meet everyone today, and thank you for coming to my presentation. Uh, so, as just stated, my name is Will Cowling. I'm the marketing manager here at FMCG Gurus. Now, today's presentation is going to be entitled the, Ev the Evolution of Digestive Health and how raised awareness about the gut microbiome will shape perceptions towards digestive health and immunity. Now, there's gonna be a key focus on this presentation and this is gonna be examining how the prevalence of digestive health problems are increasing across the globe and how consumers are becoming more conscious and will continue to do so as they learn more about the gut microbiome. Now, this presentation should last around about 20 minutes and if you would like a copy of the slides, please do feel free to contact us at info at fmcggurus.com or please come up to me at the end of the presentation and I'll be more than happy to share the slides with you. So across the globe, the proportion of consumers are suffering from digestive health problems is actually on the rise. Now, we're seeing that a significant proportion of consumers, considering from 2018 to 2020, their problems have increased. Now, problems increasing are such problems such as gas, um, bloating, and stomach aches. Now, this can be attributed to an aging society, but it's also attributed by lifestyle choices. Now, what we're seeing is that many consumers are having and struggling from poor mealtime habits, and also they're, strugg they're struggling to and tendencies to overindulge on certain products, which is actually leading to more and more digestive health problems. Now, digestive health problems are a big issue for consumers. We all understand that when having a stomach ache, it is the worst. We can't relax, and it's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. Now, not only are these problems directly impacting our digestive health and immune health, but it's actually having a direct impact on consumers' overall health and well-being as well. Now, as consumers look to address their health and well-being as a whole and moving forward into the future, we believe that this will be a continued upward trend as consumers become more conscious towards their digestive health, not because of just their health and well-being goals, but also because of the recent pandemic. Now, health goals are focused on addressing immunity and digestive health. Now, consumers are re-evaluating their health and well-being goals like never before. And initially, these concerns did come from COVID-19. And it's a mindset that all ages are actually looking to address their health. And it's not just consumers suffering from symptoms, and it's not just the, health, the older generations, but it's actually all consumers now of all ages trying to be more proactive when addressing their health. They're also adopting a broader approach, and this is the case for consumers who are not actually suffering from these problems as well. Now, adopting a long-term approach is key to consumers, and from our research, we're actually seeing that although COVID-19 concerns have dropped around about 30% in the last two years, we're actually seeing that consumers adopting a healthy living sort of approach hasn't dropped at all over the last two years, and I can share these stats with you after the presentation. Now, health goals are focused on disease management and prevention over cure. And consumers will be seeking out products that actually boost their health beyond basic nutrition. Now, consumers are not looking to address just one issue, but they're looking to address health as a whole. For example, digestive health and immune health are the two key areas consumers are looking to address. And this is because consumers are trying to adopt that notion of holistic health, recognizing that all areas of health are now interlinked. Now, a focus on prevention over cure means that consumers are becoming more conscious about their immunity. Now, as mentioned, consumers are looking to adopt that long-term approach. And I would like to now just read some stats from the slides which actually highlight this. So firstly, we can see that 61% of global consumers have become more conscious of the importance of trying to prevent health problems from occurring by leading a healthy lifestyle. 60% of global consumers say that they have become more conscious about their health in the last two years. 26% of global consumers believe that their health has worsened in the last two years as well. Now, 20% of global consumers also say that they are dissatisfied with their immune systems. 45% of global consumers say that they seek out food to help boost their health and immune systems as well. And finally, 42% of global consumers say that they're seeking out beverages that also boost their immune health. 
Now, consumers are recognizing that modern day lifestyles and their diets may not be as healthy as they once used to be. However, they also understand that leading a healthy lifestyle does have many barriers. And when it comes to digestive health, one of the key barriers consumers are finding is time scarcity. This is because many consumers now believe they do not have much time in a day and they are actually meal skipping a lot of meals, therefore turning to f confectionery and convenient foods which may not offer the right nutritional values. Now, consumers are also concerned about the financial challenges which actually are associated with leading a healthy lifestyle. And this is very important and needs to be addressed in a time of uncertainty with finances. Now, nevertheless, people are being more proactive when addressing their health and are seeking out food and drink that actually blur the boundaries between medicine and groceries. Now, this is going to be very key for the digestive health and the immune industry as consumers will be seeking out these products more often. Now, consumers are not overly familiar with the gut microbiome. Now, over the next five to ten years, we believe that more will be known about the gut microbiome and actual research highlights that understanding the gut microbiome can actually help develop customized health solutions for consumers. Now, currently, we can see that only 15% of global consumers have actually heard of this term. Now, this highlights that this is a very much industry-led phrase at the moment and therefore may not be understood by to the consumer. Now, of these consumers who have actually heard of this, we can see that 50% have actually made changes to their diets and lifestyles in order to help boost their gut microbiome. Now, when it comes to these changes, many consumers have looked to moderate their diets. So, for example, looking to reduce their sugar intake, whilst also maximizing intake of food and ingredients associated with positive nutrition, such as high fiber foods and more fruit and vegetables. Now, a higher proportion of consumers are aware of the bacteria within the digestive system. So of those consumers who are not aware of the gut microbiome, most have actually heard of concepts of bacteria in the digestive system, with many believing this actually has a positive impact on their health. Now, this has been influenced by the probiotic market, as probiotic claims can now be found across a number of different product categories. And as we will see later on in the presentation, a very high proportion of consumers are now using probiotics within the last year. Now, it is important not to overestimate the awareness around probiotics and the gut microbiome. Now, most consumers have heard of this, but consumers do not know the difference between the different strains and can actually struggle to know the difference between postbiotics, prebiotics, and probiotics. Now, therefore, consumers need to become more educated from the brands and manufacturers in order to understand the ingredients and how they actually can impact on their health. So consumers want digestive products that are actually positioned around holistic health. So as highlighted, consumers are becoming more proactive when addressing their health and well-being and when addressing their digestive health as well. Now, there is a high appeal towards food and drink products that actually aid this. But one thing FMCG gurus did ask was what additional claims would consumers like to see when looking to address their digestive health? And what we can see here is that immunity is a key area consumers are looking and associating with the digestive system. Now, a variety of claims will be highly important to consumers as they adopt this notion of holistic health. And multifunctional claims will also be highly appealing to consumers as it, the products will seem to be maximizing efficacy, it will be more value for money, and of course, easier to incorporate into their everyday lifestyles and diets. Now, claims must be authentic and backed by science-led claims as well, as this is gonna be an area we speak about later on in the presentation. Now, consumers are more likely to be taking general steps instead of specialized steps to improve their digestive health. So we're seeing that consumers are looking to make a variety of changes to their diets and lifestyles to aid their digestive health and their overall health and well-being. Now, the most common, as we can see, is that consumers are changing their diet. Now, this is closely followed by exercising more as well. Now, consumers are making these general changes rather than just going to a doctor or seeking out expert advices. Now, this is because many consumers actually recognize that some of the issues they're suffering are actually self-inflicted. And for example, we can see that this through the mealtime habits and the lack of nutritious uh, ingredients within their diets. Now, consumers will turn to food and drink over supplements as well. Now, this is due to the associations with the ease to incorporate into lifestyles and diets. And this is something that 
the supplements industry needs to address as well when talking to consumers, as consumers may still have concerns about the safety and the side effect element of actually taking these nutritional supplements. Now, we can see that there has been an increase in proportion of consumers using probiotics in the last two years. So across the globe, we can see that 64% of global consumers say that they have actually purchased probiotics in the last 12 months. Now, this is because probiotic claims are becoming more popular in different categories, such as dairy, and also categories such as cereal, the breakfast market, and snacking products, and the plant-based markets as well. Now, this also shows that consumers are happy to purchase products and ingredients positioned around the bacteria within the gut, therefore leading to a real opportunity in the future for the gut microbiome to be a real nice term which consumers can learn more about and actually associate with their diets. Now, the main reason consumers are using probiotics, we can see, is for digestive health reasons. And with, again, we can see the immunity is closely followed behind. Now, then again, this actually highlights the link which consumers associate them both with. Now, brands must make consumers aware of the science-led claims, again, and the benefits that probiotics offer. Now, consumers want evidence to support claims when uh, talking about probiotic products. Now we can see that clinical and scientific based information is important for consumers. And this is a lesson not just for the probiotic market or the digestive health market, but it's actually a, a lesson for the whole of the functional ingredients market as a whole. Now consumers are becoming more skeptical about health and wellness claims as a whole and more skeptical about the industry. They believe that brands do not have their best interests at heart and are actually misleading, using misleading claims in order to drive prices higher and this is something consumers are now less trusting of brands. Now therefore, brands need to ensure that they actually make the information available to consumers, whether this be the scientific led claims and being able to help rebuild that trust. Now this can be done in a number of ways and many consumers want to see this through QR codes, which lead them to a specific part of the website, with also uh, through their marketing and their storytelling. By being able to add this into that can actually help rebuild that trust amongst consumers. Now, it must be able to note that these claims must be fully supported and they must be simple for consumers to understand. Consumers will not have enough time to be able to research fully. Even though consumers are researching now, they will need this information to be simple for them to understand and move forward with this. Now, consumers are turning to prebiotics to help a variety of health issues. Now, although consumers are researching ingredients more often, we can see that only one in five consumers actually have heard of prebiotics and have actually purchased these within the last 12 months. Now, of these consumers, they're doing this and they're purchasing these products because they believe that they have a weakened immune system, something which they actually want to build up. Now, the reality is that many consumers will not actually know the difference between probiotics and prebiotics. And therefore, brands need to actually address this and ensure that consumers are fully aware of the differences and how they actually complement each other and actually help boost health and wellness as a whole. Now, again, this is the same for the postbiotics market, with only one in 10 consumers saying they actually have heard of this as well. Now, the postbiotic market, yes, is in its infancy, and such claims may not be overly influential when it comes to the products themselves, when consumers are seeking out these products. However, again, this does lead to that opportunity for brands to educate consumers about the different types of ingredients, new functional ingredients which they're going to be seeking out, and the role they actually have on health. Now, fears over future waves of coronavirus will increase willingness to learn more about the microbiome. Now, COVID-19 has had a major impact on consumer attitudes towards health and well-being, and of course, digestive health as a whole as well. Now, many consumers are still concerned about COVID-19, even though concern is declining. And as we can see here, 76% of global consumers are still concerned about future waves, of, uh, are still concerned about the future waves as well. Now, this highlights that consumers will continue to seek out functional claims within food and beverage products and nutritional supplements. And an increased opportunity still lies when educating consumers about the gut microbiome. So I would now like to just read out some actionable recommendations from the presentation. So what we can see is that across the globe, the proportion of consumers suffering from gut health problems is on the rise. And this is due to an aging society, but also poor dietary habits amongst consumers. 
Now, consumers recognize that poor digestive health doesn't just impact mood and energy levels, but actually has a direct impact on their long-term health goals as well. Now, urgency towards addressing digestive health will also increase over the next five to 10 years as more becomes known about the gut microbiome. Now, increased demand for functional products will drive demand for products high in beneficial bacteria and strains. Now, consumers also want products that promote holistic health, especially between digestive health and immunity. Scientific evidence is needed to support product claims. Now, brands must ensure that products are compromise-free from a taste and cost perspective, as these are key barriers to leading a healthy living, and these will always exist. And finally, brands need to ensure that consumers can differentiate between probiotics, prebiotics, and postbiotics. So thank you very much for listening to the presentation today. These slides are available, and if you would like a copy of the slides, please do feel free to contact us at info at fmcggurus.com, or please feel free to come up to me at the end of the presentation, and we'll be more than happy to share these slides. Also, down to my left, there is a, a leaflet here with our top 10 trends for 2022 on, and on the back of this, there is a QR code, and by scanning that QR code, you will be able to download the full top 10 trends report, and also a free Vita Foods report, which we have put together for the lovely attendees today. So that's all from me, and if you have any questions, I am now open to them. Thank you very much. Amazing. Uh, thank you, Will, for joining us today and sharing your insights with our audience. No worries. A reminder to our audience, if you do miss a session today, you can always catch it on demand on the Vitafoods Europe online platform. And as Will said, we are now open for questions. So if you do have a question here, uh, please put up your hand, and I can bring the mic over to you. If you are joining us online, please submit it in the Q&A portion of the platform. So we do actually, I could start off with the one that came through online, and the question is, what are the sources of these data sets in the presentation? So this data comes from a number of different surveys. So we launched a recent prebiotic survey into 10 countries, and we have also launched our probiotic survey into 30 countries, and that launched within the last two months. And then, of course, we have taken data from our digestive health survey, which was launched into around 25 to 30 countries in 2020. And this survey is actually going to be launched again this year uh, in the Q3. So if you do want to maybe ask any more questions about the upcoming surveys, our digestive health, our immune health, and our sleep and stress management, then please do feel free to contact me and I'll be more than happy to share the details with you. Thank you. Amazing. Do we have any questions from the audience at this time? No? Okay. Uh, we do have another one that's actually come in from online. Mm -hmm. It says, I'm interested in low FOD MAP market. How do you think the potential of low FOD MAP market? Um, this is a question probably best for my, uh, our head of research and our analyst to answer. So if uh, the person does want to contact me directly, then I can get them in touch with them and I'll be able to answer them in that, w in that way. Thank you. Any final questions from the audience? Yep. How does the um, understanding of pre, pro, and postbiotics track with age? Have you tracked it? So this is something we can look into into more depth. O off the top of my head, uh, I would not be able to answer, but o on our platform, we can break that data down into the age demographics. So perhaps after the presentation, maybe if I get your uh, business card, and maybe we can have a conversation later on, and maybe I can show you how we can actually break the data down, understanding the attitudes from the different age ranges as well. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, any final thoughts? Yeah. Um, you've been talking about uh, digestive health and immunity. Uh, however, we, I think it's pretty known now that the, um, the inflammation is really cause of many, of many conditions, many diseases. So how, how do you see the landscape of using probiotics to, fa uh, to fight inflammation, the different forms of inflammation that we can have in the body? Oh, sorry, can, can you repeat the question? Yes. I can so uh, in terms of the inflammation, how do you see the, the use of uh, probiotics, uh, et cetera, to, to fight the inflammation, to find the inflammation as a, as a condition? So really focusing on the inflammation. 
I don't know if you get my question. <laughs> um, we we mainly, f I think that can be, m that's more of a, a science-led question. And um, we normally just focus on purely the consumer insights as a whole. So understanding mm -hmm. the consumer attitudes and behaviors towards probiotics. Um, perhaps afterwards, if you if you come to me with the question, mm -hmm. I can maybe get, get you in touch with the analyst team who may know a little bit more ab about the details in that sense. So, okay. so thank you. Sorry. Thank you.